This is a ceremonial dish. There is this legend that says that the Aztecs boil their enemies' bodies in broths and then eat it. Thousands of years ago, the Aztec people believed they would know where to build a great city when they saw an eagle perched on a cactus eating a snake. Indeed, they've built that city. As an American, I thought I knew Mexican food. This soup is made out of cow stomach. It's called pancito. Pan it's called pancita. That is, until I came to Mexico. The salsa is no, it's very spicy. Yeah, it's not that spicy. I thought it was spicy. I have heartburn right now. Now it's clear I didn't know sh I'm very stoked to be here. This is a factory for tortillas. Sorry, I said it the American way. I mean tortillas. <laughs> In this series, Best Ever Food Review Show is on a mission to experience the vibrant. This is awesome. My whole life I've been eating tamales wrong. Dynamic. This one is stealing my heart. I love it. Crave-worthy food of Mexico. That's incredible. It's normally Mexico. We're going deep, hunting down the most unique food you'll find anywhere in the world. I'm telling you, if scientists dug this up, they would say it was a dinosaur. And I'm connecting with some of this country's most knowledgeable ambassadors of Yum. Mexico is a white country. You have a lot of regional food mm -hmm. in different states. And right now we're in kind of the center of Mexico. We're in the center. Super high up, 2,000 feet higher than Denver. Yeah, you should feel it. Yeah, I do feel it. I'm always gasping for air. Here in North America's largest city, a city of over 10 million, you can find dollar street food that will explode your mind. This is ridiculous. There's no way in the U.S. you're going to find this kind of quality. For the adventurous, if you go to the right places, you can find another world you never knew existed. Wild boar, ostrich, I could see lion as well. Did you say lion? Lion, that's correct. Today, we're starting with the traditional culinary staples that have withstood the test of time. And it all starts here. Senor? Vicente Chavez, absolutely. Mm. Is that his name? You can call him Chente. Oh, that's his name? Yeah, his name. Oh. This is Hazmi, and this is Mr. Vincente, the chicharron man. I notice you have a big box of skin. If you want to learn about Mexican cuisine, this is the perfect place to start. So they cut the meat in this diagonal pattern. To give it texture. And then they boil it for five hours. Chicharron. It's like pork rinds. Do you think we could put one of those in there? ¿Podemos echar uno? Claro que sí. All right, let's do it. Here, they go from skin to giant, bubbly, crispy creation within minutes. All right, so now he's unraveling it, putting it into one piece. I mean, this is like half a pig right here. What is the secret to the perfect chicharrón? El secreto es la temperatura aquí. He doesn't know the exact temperature, mm. but he knows how to... Do you feel it here in, in your El Harto? En la vista. Oh, he sees it with his eyes. With his eyes. That makes a lot more sense. In many places where you find meat braising and food frying, you can bet it's not oil being used, it's animal lard. This is like one giant crispy cracker right here. And so you can see that score pattern really coming to work here. Everything's expanded and moved apart a little bit. Don't move it a lot because you can break it and ah. it's going to fall down. Oh, he wants to break it. Okay. He goes, careful, don't break it. Let me break it. Chicharron is used in a load of Mexican dishes, including the breakfast I'll be trying soon. Are you ready? Yes. Sir, this was amazing. You're a chicharron legend. Modern Mexican food we see today evolved from Mayan, Aztec, and Spanish cuisines. Cactus, corns, beans, chilies, tomatoes, cacao, avocado, limes, the list goes on. These indigenous ingredients are the core of Mayan and Aztec cooking. Then, the Spanish came, contributing dairy products and livestock. In each dish, you'll find vibrant colors, flavors, and textures. That includes our breakfast. Thank you. Gracias. How's my pronunciation? Pretty American. Oh, is that right? Okay, I'll work on it. <laughs> One of the best places to break your fast in Mexico City is Fonda Margarita. And folks, line up here from the crack of dawn. What is in front of us now? These are pork rinds with salsa verde. These are a specialty of the house. Basically, eggs, beans, and lard. Refried beans with egg, or you could also call it... Frijoles con huevo. If I could have called it a second thing, I would have called it that. Melt lard in a skillet. Throw in mashed black beans and scrambled eggs. Fry it up and serve once you've achieved the signature shape. Please, be my guest. Oh, see, I'm already confused. I would have just eaten it. So we oh, put no, that in there? To, yeah, you have to make a taco. So this is bean and egg. Don't forget and, the lard. Yeah, don't forget the lard. <laughs> so we roll it up and give it a bite. Oh. 
interesting. Warm, soft beans. It's kind of a little bean burrito. Yeah. Sort of. But it's a bit on the mild side. Are you gonna add some flavor to it now? Yes, I like to make it spicy. Sauce reigns supreme in Mexican kitchens, and salsa is on top of them all. This is like the wrapper. This is what holds everything. This is like the main hearty thing we're eating, and this is the flavor. Salsas of all colors, flavors, and consistencies exist to cater to every dish imaginable. Better? Oh, that's very nice. Now it's alive. That salsa changes everything. It's super fresh, a little bit spicy. Garlicky. Oh, a little bit of garlic too, huh? If you want to make it like more pungent, you add some salsa. That is outstanding. Salsa is remarkable. Before we eat too much more, I want to ask you about you. I'm a food writer and food content creator. Hasmin is the founder of Food Police Mexico on Instagram. She's the perfect person to share a table with as I dip my toe into the world of Mexican cuisine. Most Americans, including myself, have kind of a limited idea of what Mexican food is. Most of the Mexican food we eat in the USA is like Tex-Mex. It's a mixture between the northern food of Mexico and the southern food of the United States. Right. But Mexico is a white country. When it comes to local food, Mexico is divided into seven regions. You'll find the best cattle in the north, Spanish-influenced dishes in the Bajio, delicious seafood on the North Pacific coast or the Gulf, and the southern areas offer more long-held indigenous recipes. Mexico City's central location means it's inherited the best of flavors from around the country. That includes chicharrón and salsa verde. This is a typical food from the center. These are pork rinds with salsa verde. They heat lard in a clay pot over a charcoal grill, throw in some onion, and a generous portion of salsa verde. It's one of the most common salsas in Mexico, with jalapeno, lime, cilantro, and tomatillos. Next, add in smaller portions of chicharrón and let the pot simmer for 15 minutes. I always like to start with a little square. Those are lard. Wow. It's like a diamond cut piece of skin with a bunch of lard and fat attached. It's really beautiful. I should have proposed to my wife with this. <laughs> que bonito. My so... jokes are not landing in Mexico. Wow, it's really interesting. The fat is pretty gooey and slippery, kind of slides down your throat, and then that little piece of skin is actually a little harder to chew through. It's kind of tough. It just seems like every bite has a little bit different texture, right? Mm -hmm. Wait, hold on. You put this in a tortilla, too? Yeah. Can everything go in a tortilla? Everything. What about cheesecake? Uh... To Mexicans, tortillas make the meal. A typical Mexican family of four consumes more than two pounds of tortillas a day. That is fascinating. This is real wet and spongy inside. For me, this salsa is giving life to everything. This is a fantastic start. We have a lot more food to try today. Are you still hungry? Not right now, but I'm gonna be. All right, let's do it. There's a saying in Mexico, no corn, no country. Corn was domesticated by the Mayans long, long ago, and it's been inextricably tied to the lives of Mexican people ever since. It shapes daily meals, it inspires architects, its growing cycle even influences the time of festivals. Today, 59 native species of corn take part in over 600 Mexican dishes. From everyday items like tortillas to the ceremonial dish we're about to try next. Onions, lime, sour cream. Is this oregano? oregano. More chicharron. Oregano, yeah. Oh my gosh. Wait, all this is going to go in the soup? Yes. This is a food called... Pozole. The word pozole rings in most Mexicans' ears with a note of nostalgia, conjuring memories of family reunions and special events. This dish stands out for many reasons, but this meal still starts with the soup itself. It's green, and then is this chicken or beef? This is pork. Mmm. Nailed it. A dish that's not easy to nail, but here at Los Tolucos, they've been making it for 40 years. It starts with a pig head simmering for hours until it becomes tender. This creates the base for the broth. In the meantime, prepare the hominy. Hominy is a signature of Mexican cuisine, corn kernels that are soaked in lime or lye to eliminate the grain's coating. This also makes it less fibrous and easier to digest. For the pozole, each of the stems is removed by hand, one painstaking kernel at a time. That's what these guys are doing. It takes 12 hours to simmer the hominy in the broth, so they usually leave it overnight and the pork is added in the morning. Enhance your bowl your way with green salsa, sour cream, Mexican oregano, chili powder, avocado, tostadas, chicharron, onion, or lime. How does this work? You have to 
put everything inside the pozole. I like to begin yeah, with please. onion. It also helps you balance the plate. Oregano helps you prepare your tummy for all this dish. But if you put too much, you may start to cough. <laughs> I feel like I'm in some like medieval pharmacy. Chile, we better try it to okay. see if it's not that spicy. I'll be careful. It's kind of spicy. All right. I will not taste it. You tasted it for us. All the avocado you can handle. This is a lot of stuff. We again meet with chicharrón, mm -hmm. as you can see. I like it with a lot of lime. Then you have to mix it. It's gorgeous. It's green. There's like big chunks of avocado. We can see the pork skin. Let's go for it. Mmm. Good? Yeah, it's good. Like a very hearty soup. The taste is interesting. Let me see if I can describe it. It's not like a traditional broth. It's almost like a split pea soup. How it's kind of almost a gravy that's been made with the broth and the starch together. And the taste is kind of mild. Nothing super intense. Posada reminds me of the house of my parents in the Independence Day. Do you know how this became associated with that holiday? No. Yeah, if you ask me like why do we eat turkeys on Thanksgiving, I... I wouldn't know. There's so much in here. The avocado and the chicharron give it different types of texture, but they both add a lot to it. A bit of corn flavor coming through. And then there's just big, beautiful, stringy pieces of pork. This is like a big, full, robust meal. What stands out most about this dish is that this is not a simple dish. It's a lot of time and preparation that goes into this. I have seen that they sell pozole in the way they sell instant soups. I never tried it. Yeah. I don't want to do it. This is a ceremonial dish. There is this legend that says that the Aztecs invented pozole when they boiled their enemies' bodies in broths and then eat it. Were they really bad at farming? <laughs> Or are they just really badass? We only had chickens, imagine that. Okay, if you only have chickens, you might as well just eat a guy. When it comes to creating authentic Mexican cuisine, there's one ingredient you simply can't do without, the chilies. They're what really make the food pop. Chili is just the surname of a family of 60, and they tend to carry a second name depending on their state, fresh or dried, pickled or roasted. Chilies usually accompany dishes in the form of salsas, moles, powders, or flakes, but sometimes they're cast for the main role. Chef, put her there. Hola, Aníbal Silva. Hola, how do you say chef in Spanish? Chef? Ah, <laughs> I know a lot of Spanish. We're standing in front of La Poblanita de Tacubaya. In half a decade of operation, this restaurant has won numerous international awards, all thanks to one dish that everyone in Mexico knows. What is the name of this food? Chile Nogada. Chile means chili, like a big pepper, right? Exactly. And novada? Nogada. Nogada. Nogada is a sauce made of walnuts. But I heard that, uh, I, that, okay, there's a car behind you guys. Okay, let's go over here. Chili peppers, walnuts, onions, beef, pomegranate, raisin, tomato, pears. The list of ingredients goes on without following any apparent theme. All this makes up chile and nogada. 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 First, chop the various vegetables and fruits. So is it more of a dessert or is it more of a savory item? Something in between. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. All right, this interview is going really good so far. <laughs> beef, stir-fried with fruit and nuts. A chili pepper grilled on the stove before having its skin and seeds removed. Why is this dish so special to people here? Well, lo hacemos por la celebración del there are so many legends about the chile nogada, but they say that it's a dish that is connected to the independence of Mexico because you will find the colors of the Mexican flag. After the beef is covered with the grilled chili pepper, this whole lump of random ingredients is blanketed with a puree of white, sweet, creamy sauce made with walnuts, garnished with parsley on one side and pomegranate and its seeds on the other. This looks awesome. It's a little hard to see visually, but it's just so white. So all the details and contours get lost. You don't realize that there's like really a giant pepper underneath here. Can we taste the sauce? Yes. Oh, it's like a really yummy yogurt. It is so sweet and delicious. It's got little pieces of walnut, and then there's pomegranate in here too. It's a very, very complex dish because you have to peel off the walnuts, each walnut, because the skin can make the sauce a bit bitter. It's hard for me to believe it's not, oh. But now I'm getting some taste of like beef in there too. Yes. Oh, this is so weird because at first I would swear it's a dessert. Split it right in half, and then I'm gonna just spread it open for the world to see. It is better than Christmas morning. I like it. It's so interesting. It's like this ground meat is really well seasoned, a little bit savory, a little bit sweet, and you're chewing on fruit. This is like the weirdest fruit cobbler ever. This is a seasonal dish. It used to be only during September, but the seasons of the fruits have changed because of global warm. So you can find the pear and the apple from July. Global warming, not all bad, right? Is that your point? Um. <laughs> 
I love it. Today, everything we've tried has been very traditional, but some of it's been a little bit more understated. It wasn't too wild. This is exploding. This is fireworks in my mouth. And even when you mix in grilled pepper, right? If you described it to me, I would say, that sounds kind of gross. And I'm eating it now, and I can't believe how much I love it. This is one of the most unique dishes that I've tried so far during this trip. It is my first day. I've only tried about four foods. <laughs> but I don't know. It's going to be really hard to top this. That is very unique. The only thing left to do now is the conclusion. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A piece. The center, the central part of the country was the, was, uh, I'm sorry. The no, it's fine. And center? listen, we edit this a lot. Oh. Start over, oh, don't worry about it. Wow. We can't undo that. The chili powder. <laughs> I don't have COVID. Who are you guys independent from? Spain? Spain. Ugh, yeah. Spain. Are you guys like soccer rivals? Mexico and Spain? Sí. Have you ever played soccer? Has jugado fútbol? Sí. Are your reflexes good? Do you think you could dodge this car? I think we should move this car here. <laughs> How do you say head chef? Jefe de cocina. What's jefe? Boss? Boss. Boss of the kitchen. Boss of the kitchen. I like it. That could be a new series on Spanish reality TV in Mexico. This is a Baroque dish. I had a German teacher who always said, if it's not Baroque, don't fix it. <laughs> We never laughed. How do you say sunny in Spanish? Soleado? All right, I disagree. I think it would be El Sonio. Guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to you, Hasmin. Thank you, Sonny, for inviting me to do this. Guys, you can follow Hasmin at Food Police MX on Instagram. Follow her and see her fun food adventures here in Mexico City and beyond. Is it just Mexico City? Mostly. Yeah, and beyond. <laughs> that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. Do you want to say peace too? Yes, peace. Mm. I'll take it. <laughs> Let's go.